Welcome to Householders, a conversation about American life as Zen practice. I'm Inga Annie Wade. And I'm Kyosaku John Mitchell, and we're lay members of the Atlanta Soto Zen Center. Today, as we record this, is an unusual day of the week for us. I mean, we've done it on a Wednesday before, but it's sort of our back, our, our, our fallback day if we can't make our usual time. And as a consequence, we are recording on December 8th, which by the calendar is Rohatsu, the Japanese celebration of the day of the Buddha's enlightenment. So first of all, happy Rohatsu to you, whether that's something that is a big part of your consciousness or not. Uh, But second of all, for me, it's not because the first thing I ever heard about observing Rohatsu on December 8th is that as part of like a modernist cultural project in Japan. It was decided by sort of the emperor or like, you know, ruling forces to interpret the Buddhist date of this observance of the eighth day of the 12th month as December 8th, so that they wouldn't have to bother with the arcane, ancient, silly, old, superstitious lunar calendar anymore. And they could just put it on the regular calendar. Is this the, that's the reason why it's, it's not in your headspace? Yeah, because I come from a culture where we observe religious holidays according to the lunar calendar. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't, I guess I don't know a lot about Judaism, so. (laughs) I mean, I, I, I guess I probably shouldn't pretend like I would know what that would feel like if I didn't care about the lunar calendar already. But like, I don't care about the lunar calendar. So. Okay. Well, I care about the lunar calendar. And the reason why is because the phase of the moon is deeply implicated in what a religious holiday or festival means to me. And like in right. this case, what it means is it's a commemoration of the night that the Buddha sat under a tree all night. And okay. when the, when the, you know, Venus rose in the east in the morning, he he was enlightened. So what well, that means is on the eighth day of the lunar month, there was a certain amount of moonlight in the sky and on the ground for him during this experience. And commemorating it on the eighth day of a lunar month would have the same conditions. But commemorating it on a solar calendar means it doesn't matter and the moon phase is going to be different every year and who cares yeah but like it's a beautiful story but we don't even know if that's true or not but the observance of it was created according to a lunar calendar so that every time that that holiday was observed the lunar conditions were the same and then for a 2000 years that was the case and then you know, suddenly Japan decides that it wants to be like the imperial power that rules the world. And one of the things it does is just get rid of all of that. And so now Soto Zen, as we participate in it, observes December 8th as this holiday. And it's for this very political, military, worldly reason and has nothing to do with Buddhism. I don't know, just like a lot of holidays in general are because of worldly reasons you know i mean i still celebrate christmas and i'm Mm -hmm. not pagan or christian Mm -hmm. i mean there's no reason for me to do that other than it's culturally significant to me well why is it culturally significant to you because my family celebrates it and it's a tradition that we do every year and i like spending time with my family in this context well then you've got this echo in your own sort of spiritual sure, life but it doesn't matter to me that it's on the winter solstice and it doesn't matter to me if there's any connection to jesus's birthday well that's fine i'm uh i mean well jesus's birthday is one thing i think the winter solstice is another thing but let me put it this way 
the solstice is a solar event. So December 25th is always more or less the same distance, like within hours or days, couple days max from the, from the solstice. So mm -hmm. the, the, the like astronomical situation on December 25th is the same every year as far as the winter solstice is concerned. So okay. I agree that Christmas is probably timed as a winter solstice observance and that there's this whole history of like the pagan observance of the winter solstice and the the reason Christmas is what it is is sort of to co-opt or or merge with that observance but that that is a i mean that's a solar i mean that's just moving it from December 21st to December 25th right no i don't know why the the offset from the i i, I feel like i've heard some sort of symbolism for why like the 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 four days between the solstice and tw the twenty fifth is significant in some symbolic way, um, but like that's fine because it's consistent. It's different to me to sever an observance like that entirely from the natural cycles that it's based on because well well that's the, I guess that's what I'm curious about because I. I don't really feel like it would make a difference to me is all I'm saying whether mm -hmm. Christmas was on today or the 25th mm -hmm. um it's just a day that we can go and be like we're going to hang out on this day right and actually we're not even celebrating it on the 25th this year we're celebrating it on the 19th but just because of family circumstances well yeah i mean i i think that like everybody has extended family and then and then you might go to your in-laws house or something like that i don't mm -hmm. because they're in romania but we did spend one christmas there mm. Uh, <laughs> so then everybody gets to come over and have Christmas uh, with their immediate and extended family. So. so this reminds me of what Sensei just said to me this morning when I was mentioning my sort of gripes about December 8th as an arbitrary time to observe Rohats, which is that at the temple in Chicago with Matsuo Kuroshi, because they only got together on Sundays, they just observed Rohatsu on whatever the closest Sunday to December 8th was. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they did the full ceremony for Rohatsu, but not on December 8th. They did it on just sort of the next available opportunity. And that, to me, was telling about, and, and like, t totally cool with me, first of all, and telling of Matsuo Kuroshi's attitude towards this kind of thing which is like it's just a made-up date anyway like let's use it as an opportunity to do something special with the sangha and use the sort of zen teachings about what this day is about to enhance that but like december 8th is an absurd day to tie it to and so well i might sound like i'm contradicting myself and saying like it <laughs> doesn't matter bit, yeah but but what i what i but I don't want to observe it on that day. I don't want to observe it on December 8th. I want to observe it on the eighth day of this lunar month, which is coming up on Sunday. Because okay. I don't have a relationship with this holiday that has anything to do with uh, like our sangha or its timing or anything like that. And I feel no mm -hmm. connection to it. Whereas the eighth day of the lunar month in the darkest time of winter means a great deal to me because it's like six days after Hanukkah is over and it's always going to be. And so like now there's this Buddhist holiday connected to Hanukkah and it's about enlightenment, which is like an obvious resonance with the light theme of Hanukkah. So like mm -hmm. that's when I want to observe Rohatsu and like I, I'm starting a tradition. Whereas- I mean, I would- I would love to observe Rohatsu just in general, and I've never done it. <laughs> <laughs> so what? So what is your feeling about your connection to it? Because like, I, what I wanted to just finish what I was going to say, which is like, your family's tradition about Christmas is get together with your family. So like, you're you're going to do it when you get to do it, and around Christmas is the right time to do it. But like, the real overriding practical concern is when can we all get together? And that was the yeah. same deal with the sangha in Chicago. And so like, that's what the tradition is. Uh, but but the 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 reason why like timing of Rohat Rohatsu has this sort of weird consideration for me is because I don't have a connection to it 
other than connecting to lunar months as a time to observe ritual. So like if you want to observe it, what is what is that? Where is that coming from for you? I'll probably observe it with the Sangha. Is there like a I mean, I assume there's something on Sunday. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think they do. I mean, they're going to be meditating like the whole like for several days, I feel like. I, I don't remember, but yeah, I think that they do it for a few days, and then on that night they do something special. Traditionally, it's a it's a session timing, which I just didn't think they were going to do this year. I mean, I, I didn't know what our protocol. Yeah, I haven't are about heard session. a lot about it, but I, I haven't really been very connected. Yeah, lately. So, I I mean, I've always wanted to 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 celebrate with the the sangha, and I think that's. Like you said, it's the same thing with with the Christmas, but also it just gives you like an opportunity to be like, here's a timing to Mm -hmm. practice more. Mm -hmm. Sure. I mean, I I think that's the same with like any um, any of the retreats. It's like it's ones in fall, ones in spring. But Mm -hmm. really, it's like here's an opportunity to practice more. Here's an opportunity to deepen your practice. Mm -hmm. So that's what it means to me. So it's just, it's like you kind of get this new, fresh language or symbolism or just connection to the general time of year. And you feel like because it's there and it's part of the tradition that you practice in, it's an opportunity. Yeah. So I'm interested in the feeling of, of wanting to that you're expressing, like I want to know what that feels like. What, do, do you feel that way about other such oh, opportunities? Well, I, I guess, you know, I think, I don't know, this is going to sound weird, but it's it's nice to have your own holiday. Uh-huh. I mean, it's like the U.S. kind of revolves around Christian holidays, um, mm. but... You know, I, I always thought it was cool that that Muslims are like, no, we we're gonna do this holiday at this kind of time that no one else is doing it, and uh, celebrate what we want to celebrate then. And and you know, since since uh, America is a free country, you're gonna have to accommodate us. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I kind of want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do it. Do it in that sort of public sense, in that sort of diversity yeah. way. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I mean having lived a whole life of having to create those kinds of exceptions around myself, it has a kind of exhausting effect. Uh, but there's also well, yeah, an opportunity. for you. What do you mean? But since I haven't had to do that. Right, yeah. It... <laughs> <laughs> well, I have the privilege of growing up not having to, you know, try to get others to accommodate my holidays. Yeah. Um, but we're also just in a space now that I'm sure it was harder back then. And now it's like a little bit easier to be like, well, this is my religious practice and you have to be accepting of it because, you know, you're an employer that is supposed to be equal opportunity. Mm-hmm. And I practice that with like my disability, too. But mm-hmm. that one's a little bit more embarrassing because it's like. Oh, well, is that going to keep you from working or uh-huh. Right. <laughs> That's illegal too, isn't it, technically? It is illegal, but um, people get away with it all the time. Right. So the same is true, obviously, of religious exceptions for minorities right. also. And the, it, it, I mean, like it, sometimes it even just shows up. I mean, this has to be true of disability as well, but it just kind of shows up as like hiring preferences, right? Like, you know, like an Orthodox okay. Jew is not going to get a job in like a, PR position or something where like 24 seven availability is assumed, you know, uh, True. I have enough high, I have enough trouble with it as it is. And I'm like, not so observant that I, you know, insist on getting both double days off for all holidays and stuff like Orthodox people do. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's very hard to negotiate this with the sort of civil world. Uh, and you said something a minute ago about U.S. revolving around Christian holidays, and and I've always felt that to be true. But I also feel like there is another layer of American holiday that's for everyone. And they what's what's been weird for me is how Christian holidays and these sort of a new American holidays are considered the same 
<laughs> you know, to the sort of the default culture, like Christmas yeah. and Thanksgiving are considered like the, like the same kind of thing by many people. And that's always felt super weird to me because I feel like Thanksgiving is my holiday and, and Christmas is not, you know? Uh, yeah. So like, I've always been appreciative of the Thanksgiving observance, uh, because it's around Hanukkah time often. And, you know, there's, there's sort of at least like an acknowledgement by the people, like by non-Jewish people that there's like something special to observe at this time. Um, whereas Christmas feels like, you know, just a sort of a default that everybody has to go along with, even though it's one specific religion's holiday. Thanksgiving in general is, is kind of becoming more controversial as oh, sure. far as, you know, the Native Americans and what actually happened during the holiday versus what we think happened and mm-hmm. <laughs> and whatnot. And in some ways, I think that's why it's considered Christian because it's a somewhat conservative <laughs> yeah. holiday. Yeah, yeah, I get that. That's funny. I mean, to, to sort of like, like associate that Remember the that good old days yeah. <laughs> when, you know... We had that one Thanksgiving dinner with Native Americans and kind of abused them the rest of the time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I totally feel that about Thanksgiving, but the, I mean, like about the story of Thanksgiving, but it's just never because, I mean, this is kind of an interesting parallel to what you were saying earlier about Christmas in your family. It's like, because no one in my family has ever said a single word about a single pilgrim ever. Like there's just been absolutely no mention of any of this story or its mythology or like its stupid decorations or anything like Thanksgiving has always just been a time where our family gets together, says what we're thankful for with relation to each other and eats a huge meal and watches football. And like that, because it's just called Thanksgiving, like that's sort of all you need. <laughs> so how I felt. Yeah, no, I agree with you there. I mean, I, I will at least like, even though we did grow up in school, I think school had the most influence on like uh-huh. the whole pilgrim yeah, stuff sure. going on. You know, there was like Colonial Day, um, and we dressed up like Colonial pilgrims. Oh goodness, <laughs> we didn't do that at my hippie school that I went to. <laughs> Yeah, so I think that I mean, you know, once I was graduated from 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 uh, public school, I did not have the uh, the pilgrim influence anymore. Uh-huh. And honestly, I think one Thanksgiving I did watch something about that, but it was a lot more it was a lot more critical of of that period. So yeah. And then also I think I did the same with like Columbus Day, like mm-hmm. watching something more accurate about columbus and stuff Mm -hmm. so anyways i i don't see thanksgiving thanksgiving as like a remember this wonderful story yeah yeah (laughs) like yeah that probably didn't happen the way we thought it did yeah (laughs) well something that what comes up for me when i think about those secular american holidays is sort of like the two big ones for me feel like thanksgiving and the fourth of july and the fourth of july has always been harder to extract from the history around it for maybe obvious reasons. But maybe the most obvious reason is that it's historically accurate, right? Like like it happened (laughs) that way. And the patriotism and sort of national mythos of an Independence Day it's like pretty obvious what you're supposed to do on a holiday like that. Like, I don't mean necessarily like set off fireworks, but like what you're celebrating is pretty clear. And so like, of course, the police and the firemen and the military and the, you know, all of the sort of civil servants are going to be a part of the celebrations of the 4th of July. And like, I can imagine more progressive things that could be done as observances of the 4th of July too. But the way that this i mean it it shouldn't be surprising that the way that this country celebrates its independence day is by like drinking beer and shooting bombs into the sky right yeah <laughs> and that's sort of how the 4th of july has always felt to me and i've always had kind of a hard time enjoying it just because of the of the you know the noise well I'm, I, yeah it's really loud i'm not actually a huge fan of fireworks yeah me either um, this last 
time, you know, since fireworks are now legal in Georgia, have been for a couple of years now. Mm -hmm. And um, my sister's family shot up a bunch of fireworks for like the neighborhood uh, kids and stuff like that. And there was just so much smoke and Mm -hmm. my throat was burning. I couldn't even sleep that night. I was just, everything was just fried from the smoke. And I'm like, why am I like this? Uh, but yeah, I don't really like Fourth of July. Plus, it scares all the birds and the, the animals and yeah. confuses them. Yeah, it's really dumb. Talk fan. about severing a holiday from nature. You know, <laughs> like yeah, that that's a whole another level of it. It's like, well, we might know that a war isn't happening, but the animals sure think one's happening right, right now. It like makes no difference to them whether it's an actual <laughs> war or not. Yeah. <laughs> so, They're like, please don't wear fireworks. <laughs> Yeah, it is needless. But I do like to eat, you know, some some uh, grilled food mm. on the grill. Sure, some barbecue potato chips. <laughs> yeah, that's that is my Fourth of July celebration. Totally. So Fourth of July is like about lunch. That's how I feel. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> lunch in a warm day, you know. I yeah. like those things. Yeah, totally. Who doesn't? It's it's, it's like. <laughs> the most nourishing summer thing I can think of is like basically all summer vibes take place on the 4th of July to me. I I, I want to talk a little bit more about this disconnection from nature thing because I, I I am a little, I like offended is not the word, but like I'm a little shocked by the, the way that my sort of, case about the lunar date of Rohatsu was unimportant to you. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and, and I, I, I get that. I, like all I'm really advocating for, I'm not advocating for anything sort of sacred about the time or anything, or any kind of like religious belief about the Buddha and why it's important that we have it at this, on this particular lunar day for like resonant Buddhist reasons. It's, it's more that, using the lunar calendar as a ritual calendar for me has been a very important process of deepening my relationship with natural cycles to the point now that like the phase that the moon is in at any time is like massively significant to me emotionally. And like, you know, I'd say spiritually, but I, I mean completely like in every respect, like, it, it it isn't just like something I, I look up and feel like reverent spiritual feelings for it like affects me it affects my mood it affects my energy it affects my communication um and i'm not talking about some kind of like abstract astrological interpretation of what the phase of the moon means i'm talking about like when the moon is in the sky like at what time and how much light there is right and like that is the opportunity for me that a lunar calendar observance provides is like the opportunity for us disembodied, disconnected, modern people to realize that we're actually still in like direct energetic connection with our environment. And this is a way to observe that that has this very awe inspiring and mysterious and, and powerful sign, you know, it's 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 kind of just like observing the changing of the leaves over the course of the seasons, yeah. you know. But it's this thing that kind of cycles in this big, obvious way, day and night, and so it's maybe easier and more striking to pay attention to. But is there anything inherently um, more important about that day than any other day? Well, important, not more important. But like there is something that's important about every day that has to do with how much light the moon is giving off and when and where. Well, then, but that, that's kind of like the point, right? If every day is important, then why put more significance on one day over another? Well, well, that's exactly what I'm saying. I'm not putting the significance of it on it. The moon is, is there. the, The moon, the significance is the, is the light from the moon itself. Okay, well, why is the light from the moon on that day more significant than the light on the moon on another day? Because on that day, it's 60% illuminated, and it's up in the early evening, and it is growing in light towards full. 
So okay. like you've been getting more and more moonlight every night for a few nights and the full moon is coming and that itself is always a powerful experience that lights the whole world up all night and you're getting close. You're get you're like, like the, so the eighth day of a lunar month is like, that's so 60% illumination. It's like, you're really starting to feel that coming and you notice it. That's, that's why it's more significant than a week earlier when there's no moonlight. I mean, maybe what you're saying is that that isn't a significant thing to you, but what I'm saying is that it's as significant as turning a light on in a room to me. I do enjoy the the moon cycles. I I know when I was in an astronomy class, I had to go take pictures of of the moon cycles. Mm, uh, mm, Cool. We took some really nice shots, and I actually got really excited to see what phase of the moon was in, but I don't understand the significance of saying one cycle of the moon is more important than the other. Well, I'm not saying that it's more important. I'm saying that the current phase of the moon is significant at all times. Yes, I agree with that statement. So the... But that's not what you're saying. <laughs> no, that is what I'm saying. I'm saying that the current... Be- because because the, the relationship between the eighth day of this month and the eighth day of next month is that they have the same like luminosity conditions at night. So there's... Not really. The... Well, yes, really. I mean, the moon's I mean, in a different not... place. But it's the same it's amount of light. It's not exactly like always on the eighth day. I mean, we have like 30. I mean, it's it changes a little bit. Well, I'm not talking about the solar calendar. I'm talking about the eighth day of the lunar month. The eighth day of the lunar oh, month well, is I always the, the same. Lunar. I don't know that calendar. Well, the, here's how it works. On the new okay. moon, it starts <laughs> over. So every day, there's a, there's, a, there's a new date, just like on the solar day. But, the, but one is when the moon is new. So okay. like there's 28 days in a lunar month. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's an approximate. It, it, it fluctuates more than the solar calendar. Cause there's like a little bit more than 28 days. So some lunar months have 29 days. Some lunar months actually have 30 days. The way that the Jewish count, there are actually a few different ways to sort of say when a month is new, but the Jewish calendar counts the first time you can see light on the moon, you know? Uh-huh. So like that's one. And so if you still don't, if it's been 28 days and you still don't see any light, it's 29. And if you still don't, it's 30. But then like the but next. But doesn't it like fluctuate over time though? Just based on like the way that the earth is? Like, Does what fluctuate? Still... Well, like if we use the lunar calendar and we went back 2000 years, would it still be the same? Like would it be on, on course? Well, so the, the phase, this is the thing is that the lunar calendar is based on the phase of the moon. So like as long as yeah. you're willing to adjust the amount of days in the month, every lunar month, I mean you can't have a holiday on the 30th of a lunar day of a lunar month because almost because very few months have a 30th in I them. see. But like the 8th is always going to have the same moon phase. That's how it's okay. designed. Okay, I see what you're saying. The the, yeah, the thing you. you have to adjust over history is that it doesn't line up with a 365 day solar year. So like every lunar calendar has some different system of leap months where they have to add a, like a whole month to readjust it like every few years. And yeah. that, that's why like the Jewish holidays slip back and forth like a month at a time sometimes. Okay. But that's not a big deal because actually the way, the way that the Jewish calendar handles that is there's a month that you, that's every year at the same time of year in the spring. That's just, there's another one <laughs> that not, not every year, but I mean like when you need one, they, they put in the leap month at the same time. So that like the spring is just like a little extra longer and then like everything else slips back. So the the so putting this eighth day of the month. So Hanukkah ends uh, on a new month. And so the eighth day of the following month, it's always going to be this like six days after Hanukkah, five, six or seven days after Hanukkah. There's going to be this eighth day with the same moon phase. And that's when I'm proposing to observe Bodhi Day now, Jewish Bodhi Day. And. That is going to be around this time of year every year. And that's why I chose that that month, because, of course, it's not the 12th month. Um, So, you know, there is going to be this night every year where the moon is the same. And that's when I'm choosing to observe it. And that is significant to me because, you know, 
if I go meditate outside that night, which is what seems like a good idea to do, right? Uh, That'd be nice. The moon, the light will be the same. <laughs> so I have this okay. familiar memory of like, this is the lighting of this yeah. experience. You know? I mean, I, I like the idea, like going out every year to the same moon and, and meditating. That mm-hmm. does sound like a very um, peaceful experience. Yeah. So do you see do you see how I'm not saying like this this is more meaningful of a day to have it on? It's more that it's more resonant with the holiday that was created. And I'm like completely on board with the idea that like this probably never happened and some Buddhists made it up on this day. But like they chose yeah. this day and they created this whole religion around among other observances, this eighth day of the lunar month as like an important day. So because I can have resonance with that idea, I think it makes sense to do it. Whereas like, I don't feel any resonance with like the Soto or real, just Japanese, like sort of arbitrary choice to put it in December, you know? Yeah. But I don't I don't think it's any more or less arbitrary than your choice. <laughs> I think it's less arbitrary because this lunar date for this f- observance of an overnight meditation practice is a part of the structures mm-hmm. of Buddhism. So like there are connections between observing this day and doing other stuff that constitute what Buddhism is. And that is, you could say that like the law of the government of Japan, where like Zen was the state religion, also constitutes what Buddhism is in a sense. But it's like not my connection to Buddhism, you know? Right. Like I could choose to connect to like imperial conservative Soto Zen Buddhism. Uh, Well, I would hope. But at this point, people don't relate to that yeah. type of Buddhism. Yeah. It feels disconnected from the truth. Yeah, oh, it feels disconnected. From, it feels like the finger pointing at the moon. If I, if I must bring a Buddhist cliche into this, like, you know, the moon is resonance with like what the Buddha himself supposedly realized. And the finger is let's have a holiday on a specific day to celebrate that, right? Yeah. So to me, the question is, which observance is closer to resonance with, like, realization of the truth? And if, no, if for no other reason than that, I find it distracting to think about, like, the government deciding that this was the day for, like, non-spiritual reasons. Well, yeah, but it is for convenient reasons. I mean, (laughs) it's like now everybody around the world can go celebrate it on the same day and not be confused because it switches dates every year. (laughs) Householders is a production of the Atlanta Soto Zen Center in Atlanta, Georgia, and the Silent Thunder Order. Find us on the web at ASZC.org. Our sangha depends on your support. You can donate by PayPal to donate at storder.org. Gasho.